Hello. I just got back from the shops because, you see, there comes a time in every woman's life when she feels this deep-seated urge to create something. While some women fulfill that desire and urge within them by um, having children, I decided to go out and buy something, and that something is modeling clay. And I was like, okay, I could paint. But you've all seen my painting videos, and I feel like you want something new, and I feel like something new as well. And I haven't used modeling clay since high school, and I have no clay sculpting tools. <laughs> So it's just going to be me and my bare hands and some modelling clay and we'll just see what happens. Fingers crossed it'll be good and that I can um, put it in my room somewhere as like a nice sculpture. Because everyone needs a sculpture in their room. Maybe a quick nap first. <laughs> so I have my clay. I'm just going to go and open this baby up so I can start making something. What do I need to make a face out of clay? I'm supposed to get that stuff inside, like you're supposed to use wire. I don't have any wire, so I'm going to go ahead and use some old paper or something, I think. Wish me luck! <laughs> Are you the kind of person that opens their birthday presents like... <coughs> or do you carefully peel back the layers and like just detach them and fold it for next time? Because um, I'm opening this really carefully. It smells kind of nice, actually. <laughs> Most clay I don't like the smell of because it's just brown clay but this is air dry clay so this doesn't actually need a kiln which I didn't even realize existed until I went to the shop and the lady was like you really want that clay like the regular clay hun because it you have to put it in a kiln and that costs hundreds of dollars what no I don't want to do that so she gave me this instead what a lovely lady it's like um feta or a type of cheese, like cream cheese. It's kind of congealed in the sun. Okay, I feel like I probably shouldn't have opened that yet. I probably should have made my uh, structure first. So I'm gonna do that and hope it doesn't dry out. The man might be the head of the house, but the woman is the neck and she can make the head turn in whatever way she likes. Because that looks like a head and a neck. <laughs> but you know what they say, never give up on your dreams, never give up on your goals. And my dream is to have a clay face sitting on my windowsill. Is my skeleton and I'm gonna put the clay on top of it to see what happens. This could go really well, really badly. And it's kind of exciting being in that unknown realm, you know, where anything could happen. But unfortunately real life is not like that and not knowing what's gonna happen is absolutely terrifying. But I suppose art is like that place where you truly can embrace not knowing what's gonna happen. You know, it's amazing how many times you can look at someone, like I know what shoulders look like, you know, I know, I know what a neck looks like, I know what a face looks like. I've looked at people millions and millions of times in my life, and yet when it comes to replicating it, it's hard. Why can't we just know what to do and what things look like and just make stuff? But I suppose that's why some people have talents in some areas and some don't. And if everyone's super, then no one will be. Quote as not Astro Boy, what is his name? See, my sisters are really good at quoting movies. And so they'll just like throw around these quotes and I know the quotes, but I don't know what the movie is. And I'll be there like, okay, well, I know the quote now. I don't know the context, so. I don't know if I'm supposed to use water with this clay. This is like, I have no instructions, damn it. I'm gonna go get some water. I think that's a good idea. I'm not sure if water helps at all. It's kind of just making it sticky. <laughs> it's a process, you know, but at least we're learning something.
Amanda, meet Jane. We'll name her later, maybe. If you're wondering what beats I'm listening to, I'm not actually listening to music. I'm listening to a sermon by Stephen Furtick. It's called The Prison of Offense, The Other Half. But uh, he's talking about how people can be so easily offended nowadays and <laughs> how the devil's strategy in our lives is to cause and stir up that conflict between us and how as Christians, or just as people in general, we need to learn how to take criticism and to not be offended by everything because I think it's just as important to be able to give good criticism and give it politely and tactfully as it is to receive it. And I know personally, I, I really struggle with that. I, I, I'm quite sensitive and um, yeah, working on that like ability to regulate my emotions and be stable despite what people say and uh, despite what the world thinks is something that I'm on a journey and, and learning about and that God is really walking me through. And, um, but if that's something you feel like you'd like to listen to, I'll link it below. It's a great sermon. Stephen Furtick has some amazing sermons actually. Highly recommend looking them up. Even if you're not a Christian, even if you're not really interested in spiritual stuff, there's so much practical life advice in there. Um, but yeah, I would recommend it to anyone, honestly. Just drop my scissors. So dangerous. Can't tell what side of the face is the front. <laughs> One shoulder is so much bigger than the other. Been to the gym and just done a one-sided shoulder workout for like six months. I don't know, can you see that? This one is huge. This one is not. God has made each person perfect, you know, he's literally sculpted us from the dirt and he, he knew us when we were in our mother's wombs, wombs, wombs. Every inch of us is exactly as God wants it to be. And that's, when you actually internalize that, man alive, that's life changing. And it's only been in the last couple of weeks that I've really been internalizing that. The confidence you can feel when you actually believe God's truth is astounding. How many of you have heard it said, you know, you're beautiful, you're made exactly as God intended, and actually believed it. So, so easy to just forget it, you know, in the space of about 30 seconds. You kind of zone out, look at Instagram, look at all these skinny models, look at all these people achieving things. Look at people that are younger than you, that are much more successful than you, or people that were in your grade in high school that are now making, you know, a million dollars a year, whatever it is, you look at that and you immediately forget your worth comes from God, because he made you and he loves you, and that God has an eternity waiting for you. In Ecclesiastes, it talks about um, our lives being like dust passing away, and our lives being like a dandelion. And all of the little petals just float away in the wind and are then gone. And that's what our life is like. And when you think about it that way, it's actually a little bit scary, because <laughs> life is so short. and. King Solomon says that you need to enjoy your life because it's short and that you need to live in line with God's purpose for you because otherwise you will always be unfulfilled. Battery low. Okay, I'm gonna take these off. Going back to the old school. She's coming together, folks. That nose is far too wide. What? Okay, she's not coming together, folks. But she'll get there because as the Bible says, he has made everything beautiful in its time. And this is no exception. Wear this ring like a tattoo. Gotta tell you. Make me wanna wake up beside you every day. Cause your kiss goodnight could give me bye for a lifetime. 
when you make lips, if you can see that the lips are currently kind of sticking out like that, but lips don't do that. They kind of come straight down and then in. So basically I need to fix the lips. Oh yes, also my cat is having a nice time. Danny, what are you doing? Danny, Danny, what are you doing? What are you doing? Okay, so I have two eyes, but it looks like she has pink eye or conjunctivitis because they're so flippin' swollen. So I'm gonna add some cheekbones underneath to hope that that fixes the problem. I've just been using a pencil. It's definitely rough around the edges, but still, I've managed to make this. Oh, my clay is going out. I think it's because I scrunched up the paper inside. I think I should have just started from scratch. Power of hindsight, yet again, striking me down. Okay, she now has eyebrow ridges. Yes. It looks fine from the front, but on camera, it looks so bad. Maybe, maybe the camera really does have 10 pounds. <laughs> maybe she needs like a headband of sorts. Maybe that's what I'll do. Also, I was looking at a reference image before of a 2D woman. Doesn't help. So I'm literally just going off what I think a person should look like. So if it looks funny, Please forgive me. Okay, well I think this is probably as good as we're gonna get, honestly. See, this is the part I struggle with most when it comes to making art. When do you stop? Because I could do so much more to this. I could blend everything really well. Oh, and I could straighten up it. There's so many things I could do. There's always that indecisive end of artwork feeling and I don't like it. Yeah, look at that. Oh my goodness. I've had the best day. And my, my intrinsic guttural desire to create something has now been at least somewhat fulfilled. I could definitely go and paint this now. Maybe I'll paint it for next week's video or maybe I'll paint it for this week's video. I don't know where I'm going to incorporate that. But if for some reason there's like another six or seven minutes towards the end of this video, you'll know why.